Christ coming back. Christ coming back. When he do we bring it back? When he do we bring it back? You don't wanna get burned. You don't wanna get burned. You better side with the right. You better step up on his side. Every day we strive hard. Every day we strive hard. To get the laws and come back. Get the laws and come back. If you don't keep them up and leave in them. Why you better listen? Oh boy, you gon' vanish. Hey, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Tell me what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Better stop playing games, get you some of this truth. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Tell me what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Better stop playing games, get you some of this truth. First thing first, gotta praise the most high. Who's giving me his truth in the world full of lies? But we all know seeing that in all time high. If you don't plan on repenting, damn boy, you gon' die. Everybody doing what they wanna do. Tell me who you worship, who you pray to. You gon' hate it, but I gotta say it. It ain't the most high, you gotta say it. Yeah. Change you don't want to. You in love with that demon that's within you. I'ma have to befriend you. Help you out, cause that is what friends do. Two thirds gotta die, oh, when you don't wanna be a part of that. Please repent and turn from your wicked ways, and that's all I gotta say, cause Christ coming back. Christ coming back. When you do we bring it by? When you do we bring it by? You don't wanna get burned. You don't wanna get burned. You better side with the right. You better step up on his side. Every day we strive hard. Every day we strive hard. To keep the laws and command. Keep the laws and command. You don't keep them up and leave in them. Why you better listen? Oh boy, you gon' vanish. Hey, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do when it come for you? Tell me what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Gotta stop playing games, get you some of this truth. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do when it come for you? Tell me what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Gotta stop playing games, get you some of this truth. What you gonna do when it come through? Thought it was a game, not a joke, so you. People hit it for the play, let them burn on you. Feel a lot of shame, no one to blame but you. You had a choice, but you wouldn't have applied. If you was alive, you didn't get the most high. Now you going down here to the left side. Where well, you gonna hear some screams and a whole lot of crying. Yeah, and that's gonna be forever. That's gonna be forever. Forever, forever, ever, forever, ever. Look, you ever put your hand on the stove while it burning? That's the feeling that your soul gonna feel for eternity. How'd you bring your chain while you got the opportunity? You only got one life, what you gonna do with it? Yeah, a lot of y'all playing with a higher. I can barely take the sun. They ain't trying to feel the fire. Christ coming back. Christ coming back. When you do we bring it back? When you do we bring it back? You don't want to get burned. You don't want to get burned. You better side with the right. You better step up on his side. Every day we strive hard. Every day we strive hard. To keep the laws and command. Keep the laws and command. You don't keep them up and leave in them. Why you better listen? Oh, boy, you gon' going to vanish. Hey, what you going to do? What you going to do? What you gonna do when it come for you? Tell me what you gonna do. What you gonna do? Gonna stop playing games, get you some of this truth. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? What you gonna do when it come for you? Tell me what you gonna do. What you gonna do? Gonna stop playing games, get you some of this truth. <laughs>
minds, they can take a beat, told me that I was a hero by blood, and now it is time, that I like awake, getting out of my sleep, turn from my sins, renew my mind, try this again, third in the book, follow his laws, I started to see life through a new lens, I do not regret the decision I made, I gotta say, I came a very long way, the spirit is on me, it won't go away, glory to Abba for helping me change, yeah, Abba, 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 I'm so glad you changed me, my life is so much better as it says I can't clean, I, I, I see all my partners, they still on that same thing, but I have faith in them like you had in me, I just try to see the good in everybody, I stay illuminated, all this right inside me, I love saving souls, that's one of my hobbies. I'm a rock the side. She ain't never been a killer. Never been an alcoholic. But when it came to learning brows, the rock the side was a scholar. It came so easy, it was insane. So many don't remember names. It got to the point it was a sport to me. The truth is, I was playing games. And juggling, juggling, juggling. Even told them I was loving them. And they ain't mean to not one time. It was only so I could get up in them. True, I was just stuck in the loop. Felt like I could never get loose. I was so strangling, tangling, seeing I swear I was hanging myself from a new I praise the highest for the truth and all Cause I was headed to hell with the juvenile Really about to be a hot boy 500 degrees like juvenile I'm glad I dodged that And I wish I could call all them broads back And beg for forgiveness and tell them sincerely I want to just show you what God's at Hey, if he could change me Then he could change you I was a dead man Now I'm brand new Man, cut the beat. I want to say this from my heart. I want to get prayed to the Abba Ahaya for giving this son a new start. Let's go. Hey, Abba, 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 I'm so glad you changed me. My life is so much better ever since I came clean. I, I, I see all my partners, they still on the same thing. But I have faith in them like you had in me. I just try to see the good in everybody. I stay illuminated on this life inside me. I love saving souls, that's one of my hobbies. Abba, 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 I'm so glad you changed me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shalom, shalom, my brothers and sisters out there. All praise and glory to the Most High. All praise and glory to the Most High, my brothers and sisters out there. Okay, and so happy you guys are tuning in. You know, we're about to eat today. You guys hungry? I don't think you guys heard me. Who's ready to eat? I'm ready to eat. Okay? I am ready to eat. As you guys already know, let's give our praises to the Most High Power. Ahaya Asha Ahaya. In the name of Yeshaya and the Ruach Kodash. It's your brother, Micaiah Wild Israelite. From One Nation, One Power, the Church of Christ, where we do our PhD. We do our prayers, we do our healing, and our deliverances. Where we at One Nation, One Power have the law, the statutes, and the commandments. We're the keepers of those. Okay? So it says right there in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 16 and 20, and Revelation chapter 14, verse 12. Okay? So that's what we're doing at One Nation, One Power, okay? We teach water baptism, okay? We teach, you know, the fullness of the gospel and things of that nature, okay? And, you know, we're, we're being spiritually elevated to new heights, my brothers and sisters. We're, we don't pass the sky, okay? You know how they used to tell you, oh, the sky is the limit. Well, we're past the sky, okay? We're, we're way past the sky. Because, you know, those have not got past the sky are still dealing with earthly uh, psychology, earthly philosophy, and things of that nature. Okay, one nation, one power, we were going to broke the atmosphere. We're up to the third heavens already with this, this wisdom and this knowledge. Okay, but welcome back. Okay, we're going we're gonna to do some more, we're going to do some more um, pulling out the little Jenga blocks of the devil's tower. Okay, that's kind of crazy, you know, they had the same thing that's over there and, uh, you know, um, what is it, uh, Wyoming, okay, the same state where I live, the Devil's Tower. But, you know, as always, we're going to pull a block out from the devil, from his little, his little skyscraper or whatever, okay, just so we're going to play Jenga blocks, okay. 
So we're going to pull another block out. Okay. And this one's called Satan's Will Pharmaceutical. Okay. Pharmaceutical. Satan's Will. Okay. Now, as I showed you guys, all the precepts that we're going to be going into today. Okay. All the precepts that we're going into today. And also, um, you know, um, you know, we're going to be going into the sealed portion today. We're going into this book. This is actually the sealed plates. You know, this says it says it shows right there in the picture. This is the sealed plates. They just translated from the plates to the book. Okay. But yes, some of it, you know, you know, they got some bones in there. Some of them, you know, but you know, they have the original, you know. And that's when the copies came in, you know, and then they threw some bones in this book. Okay. They throw some bones in this book. What do we do with the what do we do with the, the meat? We eat the meat, okay, and we throw out the bone. Okay, we throw out the bones. Okay. So get your seal portion if you ain't got one. It's cool. I will read it to you. Okay. I will read it to you. But we, before we go in there real quick, let's go to this book real fast. Okay. So you guys can get the understanding of what we're going to go into today. Okay. We're going to go to the seal, the seal book of Mormon. And if you don't have this book, okay, please reach out to Elder. Elder Ayo. Okay. I, I believe... He has a, a you know box full of these copies. You know, I I think it's, it was a sister from Australia who sent him you know a, a good amount of copies. If not, you know, uh, see if you can do some research. You know, just as it says in Second Timothy uh, two fifteen, study to show thyself approved. You know, if you have to go do your research, go do your research. You know, I found all kinds of books. Okay, you can probably get this from off uh, you know one of the um, I, there's a couple of websites I can direct you to. Okay. I'll put them, probably put them in the description box for you guys, okay? But let's go into this real quick, okay? Let's get into the meat of this real quick. This is the seal, the seal uh, Book of Mormon, okay? Seal Book of Mormon, okay? And it's, it's not up on the list that I just showed you guys, but, you know, I'm going to show you, okay? So this lays the foundation, okay? This is... Um, Chapter 4, verse 52, and it says, And now with the purpose of the people of the covenant to no longer be deceived, when in the last days, ye, before you, Enoch, returned with you to your city in this land, the watchers who were driven out of the vicinity of the earth will send signs unto the children of men with the promising of ending their diseases. Pause. What? With the promise of ending their diseases. Okay? And you guys already know what the next video is going to be talking about, right? Satan's will, and it's going to be based off of religion. Okay? So we're going to go into this right here. It says, We'll send signs to the children of men with the promise of ending their diseases. Okay? And it keeps going. It says, And to provide them with an alliance, and thus with the support of Satan. Okay? The rest of it that goes after their disease, like where it says their religion and their false prophets and the scriptures and the false messages, that's going to be on the next study. Okay, that's going to be on the next study of Satan's will called religions. Okay, we're going to tackle that one too. Okay, but before I do that, I'm going to get my hands on a Quran. Okay, I'm going to get my hands on a Quran, not for religious purposes, for study purposes. Because I have a bunch of precepts from the Quran that direct you to the Bible. So don't get it twisted. Okay? Do not get it twisted. But we're going to be dealing with pharmaceutical, you know, and then the so-called cure, what they call, you know, the vaccines and things of that nature, you know. We already know it's a lie. Okay? Because I'm pretty sure every time y'all take a flu shot, y'all end up getting sick just like I did back in the day. That's why I don't take them no more. Okay? And you can't go nowhere around in the places, you know, without having a mask or being persecuted because, oh, you don't want to wear a mask. Okay. You know, a lot of us are being persecuted for over this matter because, you know, some of us like to wear a mask that only sits right here, like I did in the other video. You know, some people don't like to wear the mask or being persecuted both ways. Okay. But let's check this out quick. Okay. Let's go to the sealed portion. 
chapter 80, 86. Sealed portion, chapter 86. And we'll look at verses 82. And it says, Behold, you have the words of Christ in the Bible. Therefore, have you read the words of Christ pertaining unto those who are dead? Okay, so, so the, the still portion is telling you, have you read the scriptures where it's talking about, where it talks about, you know, the dead will bury the dead? Okay, so let's continue. It says, Behold, you have the words of Christ in the Bible. Therefore, you have read the words of Christ pertaining unto these who are dead. Is it not written, saying, and another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. But Yeshua said unto him, Follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Okay, so now we're going to get that out inside of your, your stick of Judah. Okay, we're going to go there. We're going to pull that up right now. Okay, so let's go to Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 8, verses 21. Matthew 8 and 21. And as always, you know, we want to know the precepts. Get the precept formula right down. Um, Isaiah chapter 28, verses 9 and 10. Psalms 119, verses 104 and 128. 2 uh, Nephi chapter 28, verses 30 and 31. And Doctrines and Covenants section 98 and 12. So that's how you want to read your Bible. And that's how we're going to read these precepts. Okay. So let's go to Matthew chapter 8, verses 21 and 22. Okay, and it says right here. Okay, Let's see if I get this right here. We go. And it says right here. Okay, this is Matthew chapter eight, verses uh, twenty and twenty-one. And it says, and Yeshua said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. And another disciple said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. 22 says, but Yeshua said in him, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. Okay? Let the dead bury the dead. So let's get another one out. Let's talk about in uh, Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. And we're going to look at verses 57 through 62. Luke chapter 9. Verses 57 through 62. Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62, and it says, And it came to pass, as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee where else thou goest. And Yeshua said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds in the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first that I go bury my father. And Yeshua said unto him, let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. What? But go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my home in my house. And Yeshua said to him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is, for, is fit for the kingdom of God. Okay? So this is what we need to do. You know, we need to go out there and preach the kingdom of God. Okay, we need to preach the kingdom of God. Just as it says, repent for the kingdom is, is, is at hand, right? So let's continue on that one too. Okay, let's go back to um, still portion uh, 86 and 83. Okay, still portion chapter 86, chapter 80. Uh, Still portion chapter 86, verse 83. And it says, Behold ye, what? Behold ye of the latter days, which we are in right now, shall trust more in your doctors and the medicines that ye shall create by the means of the miracles that Satan shall give unto you, than ye do in the Lord, who is the giver of life and of those appointed over death. Okay? So it's saying, Behold, you in the latter days are going to trust more in your doctors and the medicines that they are prescribing to you over the counter, you know, like Oxycontin, uh, you know, like uh, Percocets, uh, Vicodin, you know, 
all these, you know, pharmaceutical type of medicines that they've been using. Uh, you know, those other ones like Lyrica or, or things of that nature, okay? Y'all already know what I'm talking about, okay? And this is not, you know, a, like a big, like super uh, hate on over-the-counter over the, over the medicines, okay? Because you can get the, these, uh, these medicines over-the-counter. You know, some of them are good for your pain. Like if you have a gunshot wound, like... You know, that type of nature, or if you have, you know, like a, a stab wound or, or something like that, okay? You, it, it, it's cool to take it at the moment, okay? But it's not going to cure you for a lifelong, you know, uh, you know, like a lifelong term, whatever, okay? It's not going to cure you just like that because once you start getting that, then you start opening the door to becoming having an addiction, Okay? You know, you can take Advil, you know, you could take things that, uh, you know, you could take Advil, you could take uh, Tylenol, you can take some of these over-the-counter medicines. It, it's good to have them, okay? It's good to have them, you know? I take them sometimes, you know? I try, to, you know, to endure the pain. I try to endure the pain, you know, because sometimes, you know, you be standing so long, you're like, oh, man, my back hurts. You know, all of a sudden, you know, and that's when you just start, um, you know, start praying at times and, you know, just, you know, just lay down, rest. Rest is a big key to healing, okay? Rest is, is a big key to healing, okay? So let's go to, um, let's go to, uh, let me see. Let's go to Second Chronicles real quick. Second Chronicles, okay? Let's go to Second Chronicles real quick. Second Chronicles chapter 16. Second Chronicles 16. Second Chronicles 16. Second Chronicles chapter 16. The dog's barking out there. That's a husky. <laughs> a little miniature husky. She's cute. Um, Second Chronicles chapter 16, uh, verse 12. Okay. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 12. And it says, let me see, where are we at? Yep, that's the one we want. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 12. And it reads, And I saw in the thirty and ninth year of his reign was diseased. Okay. It says, and a sign in the 30 and 9 year of his reign was diseased. Okay, let's pay this all again. Okay, it says, and a sign in the 30 and 9 year of his reign was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceedingly great. So his disease, you know, started to overcome him. Okay. But let's continue. It says, Yet in his disease, he sought not what he sought not to the Lord. So when his disease got so bad, he didn't even, he didn't even go to the Messiah and ask him, Can you help me? Okay. But who, who did he go to? It says right here. It says, Yet in his diseases, he sought to, not to the Lord, but to the physicians. Okay. He went to the physicians. See, you know, there, there's a balance, you know, at certain times, you know. This is where you need to have deser uh, discernment. You know, a lot of your stuff, you need to take it to the Most High. Okay? You got to take a lot of your stuff to the Most High. But, you know, if, like I said, if you're dealing with a gunshot wound or a stab wound or something like that, or if you got your arm cut off, yeah, it's cool. Go to the physician. Okay, go to the physician, go to the hospital, go get it treated. Okay, you know, some people, you know, they, they'd rather put their trust in physicians. Okay, they'd rather put their trust in physicians. You know, there's, there's some good out there and there's some wicked. Okay, there's some good out there and there's some wicked physicians out there. Okay, so let's go to... Uh, Job chapter 13, verse 4. Job 13 and 4. 
Job chapter 13, verse 4. Okay. Job 13 and 4, it says, But ye are foreigners of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. Okay, especially when it comes, you know, to these, these wicked uh, uh, pharmacists out there, okay? These wicked um, uh, pharmaceutical doctors out there, okay? Because, you know, let, let's put it like this, okay? It's easier for you to be born into this world it's not that it's not that expensive, okay? But it's more it's more expensive when a person dies, okay? Because we, we we as the people we can't bury our own people. A majority of the time we can't, right? Because you know we take it, uh, you know, to like a like a little church or whatever, you know, or a Catholic church, you know, they have the 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 mass and you know the rosaries and things of that nature, you know, and the funerals the next day. Okay, you guys already know it's all about the religious status or whatever. Okay, they take it into things of that nature. But you know, um, you know, like I say, you know, a lot of these doctors, you know, they get paid more when a person dies. Okay, they get paid more when a person dies. So that's why at times, you know, they they find uh, they don't have the cure. You know, like. How long have we been uh, seeking answers for for the the cure of cancer? These these people have not been they have not been uh, you know they have not found the cure for cancer. They say that uh, what is that a chemotherapy or, or whatever that uh, going into the little cat scan or whatever that thing is you know is going to make you all good with all that radiation coming at you. See a lot of people come out here with a bald head and lose their hair. Okay, it's not doing nothing but killing them a lot faster. Okay, same thing with these these uh, these drugs, these uh, uh, these drugs that they're giving the people. You don't know what's inside of these drugs. Okay, you don't know what's inside of these drugs. Well, uh, I'm going to show you right here, Ken. It says how to legally decline vaccines. Okay, how to legally decline vaccines. Step one, do not refuse a vaccine. Otherwise, you'll be, be considered bellig belligerent. Instead, what? Instead, you can politely decline their service by doing the following. Step two, ask the doctor if the vaccine has MRC-5 in it. They all do. These are our body fetal cells and other DNA. If it does, you have the right to decline it. So if it has MRC5 in it, you know, just ask your doctor, hey, what's in the ingredients in this shot? Does it have MRC5? Like, uh, how, how do you know? You know, they'll start giving you know, like the little, the little evil eye, like, how do you know about this? Okay. And they, they say yes, sometimes, you know, they'll, they'll, uh, a lot of these doctors, they already took oath, so they have to tell you, okay? They have to tell you what's in it, okay? And so if it's in it, then yes, you can legally decline a vaccine, okay? Here's another one. It says right here in um, step three, it says, also, if there is a possibility of a uh, latrogenic reaction, Latrogenic reaction, an adverse reaction caused by multiple compounds or drugs interacting with one another. From the vaccine, they all do. When the doctor says, yes, it does, that's your get out of vaccine jail free card. Thank the doctor for their offer and walk away. Okay. So if it has MRC5, in, in the uh, the vaccine, you can walk away and decline it. You can tell them, hey, that has fetal cells in it. No, I can't take that. You know, you're not going to destroy my fetal cells. Okay? And there's the other one that says, if it has a, a latrogenic reaction, which means that there's multiple drugs being compounded into that one syringe, okay? And they're going to stick you with it. And when they stick you with it, you're not going to know how your body's going to react to it. Okay, your body's gonna react to you. It can cause you to vomit. 
It can cause you to have diarrhea, okay? It can cause many symptoms in your body to have a, 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 a um, you know, body and organ uh, shutdown failures, okay? So this is why, you know, this is why I never took the flu, sh the flu shot, you know? Uh, they offered the flu shot already at my job just a, a couple of days ago. And, you know, one of the, uh, the co-workers that works near me, she said, hey, have, are you guys signing up for the flu shot? I was like, no, I don't take the flu shot. She's like, well, they, they end up losing the, the list that everybody wrote their names down on. They end up losing it. So I don't know what's going on from there. You know, I'll praise the most high. You know, everybody, that they lost that list. Okay. But, you know, the devil's still going to urge them to take the dang vaccine anyway. Okay. Okay, let's keep reading. It says, remember, doctors have sworn that, let me see, the, the, uh, the, Hippo, the Hippocratic Oath. So this is a Hippocratic Oath that they assigned. And, and they are so-called solemnly swear. Okay. It says, remember, doctors have sworn the Hippocratic Oath, which is, which is do no harm, and they must honor it. This is how we can legally and respectfully decline the offer mandated service and and there is absolutely nothing they can do about it so now you know okay so this is how you can legally decline vaccines and you know they cannot cop an attitude about it. so if it has mrc5 in it which has fetal cells and the other one is a uh, latrogenic uh, um, reaction, which means, you know, multiple drugs inside that one syringe being going to be stabbed into your body. Okay. That's how, and also bringing up the, uh, the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The, the Hippocratic Oath. Okay. So if you bring those to the attention of when, you know, when the doctors or whatever, okay, they say, oh, your, your child can't go to school unless you have a vaccine. Well, I have a paper. And some of you sisters or brothers out there, you guys can do some of your uh, your information on it. But it says it's an in immunization exemption. Okay, it's an inhuman. Uh, can't put it right there. See that? So this talks about information in regards to you not you know you you not like uh, required to take this vaccine or whatever, okay? It's like a religious status, okay? So you you can use it for your benefit, okay? You can say, oh, I'm religious, oh, blah, blah, blah. But we already know we're not religious, okay? We're not religious at all. But you can use that paper as your advantage, okay? Let's start to bring that up to you guys real quick, okay? So let's keep going. Let's keep going, okay? Let's go to Jasher, chapter 4. Jasher, chapter 4, real quick. Jasher, chapter 4. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys something right here real quick, okay? Jasher, chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. So I'm going to tell you why. There, there's multiple uh, mixtures of drugs and also DNA of animal strains mixed in the, these little flu shots. These vaccines, okay? You guys already know the H1N1, that virus, okay? The, 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 pig, uh, the pig flu, the bird flu, things of that nature. Okay, look, this is where they got it from, okay? This is Jasher chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just deal with, uh, we'll just do with, uh, with 18. It says, and their judges and their rulers went to the daughters of men and took their wives by force and from their husbands according to their choice. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and taught the mixture, what? And taught the mixture of animal of one species with another in order therewith to provoke the Lord. What? In order to provoke the Lord. And God saw the whole earth, and it was corrupt, for all flesh had, had corrupted its ways upon earth, all men and all animals. Okay? Well, yeah, we'll, we'll tackle 19. It says, 
And the Lord said, I will blot out man that I created him from the face of the earth. Yeah, from the man to the birds and to the air, to the cattle of the beasts that, that are in the field, for I repent that I made them. Okay? So that's what's going on right there. Okay, so that's where they, that's how far it goes back with, with this information. Okay. Now we're just dealing with it in a science and a, uh, technology matters when it comes to our day and age with all these, you know, these mixture of animals and, and humans and all that stuff like that together. Okay. Cause I'm pretty sure y'all already seen that nasty uh, combination, you know, on like, you know, like news outlets or whatever. Okay. It's gross. Okay. It, it's horrible. Okay. Um, but anyways, um, Let's, let's continue and keep reading, okay? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. And we'll look at verse 15 because a lot of these people out there in these little doctor evil scientist labs, they think they're they they think that everything that they're doing, we don't know about. Okay? Now now we already know. So now I'm giving you guys the warning about it too. Because why is it the scriptures tell you so? Okay? The most high gives you the knowledge because hey, most high knows all sees all. Okay? So let's keep going. Isaiah 29, verse 15. And it says, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and the works are in the dark, and they are they are saved. Who seeth us and who knoweth us? Okay, so that's what they're saying. Who knoweth us and who's seeing us do this to the children of men and to the rest of the world? Okay, that's what the, that's what the same mindset that these Dr. Little Evil Scientist people have. You know, like, uh, like Bill Gates, for instance. Okay, he thinks that we don't know what the heck's going on. That's why he said it in one of his little videos, oh, let's get this COVID-19 vaccine now and let's test the 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 black. Let's test uh, let's test uh, you know the the Native American, and let's test the Mexican first. Okay, I'm pretty sure y'all seen that video, right? If not, go watch it. Okay, him and his wife were just sitting there, and like, hey, let's test the black first. Let's test um, the the Native American, and and let's test the Mexican first on these vaccines. Sorry, not today. We're not going to be no damn lab rat. Y'all test it on yourself and, and we'll see how far you get, okay? <laughs> For real, real tight. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, let's go to... Um, let's go to Second Chronicles 16. Second Chronicles 16, we were just there. And we were looking at verse 9, it says, For the eyes of the Lord, okay, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have works. Okay, so the Most High has eyes that go to and, and, and fro into our realm into back to the spiritual realm. Okay, he has eyes. He sees all. Okay, he knows what's going on. He uses your eyeballs to see what's going on. Okay, just as the devil uses the camera for you know his, his little eyeballs, the, the Most High uses our eyes to see, and his also his the angels, uh, the uh, the watchers out there. Okay, he uses those. Okay. Let's go to uh, Proverbs chapter 15. Let's keep read, let's keep uh, dissecting it off of this one. Okay. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15 real quick. Okay. Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15. And we will look at verse... Um, Proverbs chapter 15, and we'll look at verse uh, is 3, okay? Proverbs 15 and 3, if I can get some real quick, okay? Proverbs 15 and 3 says, 
The eyes of the Lord are in every place. What? The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Beholding the evil and good. What? The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Beholding the evil and good. Okay? So let's get that one out of the way too. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter... Um, actually, let's go back to... Uh, let me see. Let's go to... Uh, let's read... Let's go to, uh, we read the uh, last one, it was, uh, let's, let's go to, let's see, um, let's go, one moment real quick, guys, hold on one second. Hi, right, my brothers and sisters, sorry about that. Uh, so let's go to uh, Seal Portion, chapter 86, and we'll read 84 and 85, okay? But before I read that real quick, I want to show you guys something because this is what Satan likes to do, okay? This is what he loves to do. Okay, this is another arsenal that you could put inside of, you know, your spiritual realm ever, okay? This is Mark chapter 4, verse 15, it says, And these are by the way, by the side, where the word was sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and take away the word that was sown in their hearts. So when more brothers out there are preaching the word of God, then all of a sudden, you know, you have somebody or some distraction that be coming out of nowhere. You're like, oh, bam. And then everybody gets distracted. You know, the, the, the teacher gets distracted and, and the person that's hearing the word of God gets distracted. That's how Satan likes to do things. Okay. Satan, he's, he's slick. Okay. Mark chapter 4, verse 15. And these are, by the way, where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay, so we're going to keep reading real quick, okay? We're going to keep reading. You know, I've been dealing with this crazy devil all week. You know, he, he's coming. Get your, get your spiritual armor on as soon as possible if you're lacking in it, okay? Get it on because he's attacking hard, okay? Last days, he's he going to do whatever he, it takes, okay? Let's keep dealing with, uh, you know, uh, let's keep dealing with things in the Spirit. Let's keep praying in the Spirit. You know, the, the prayer is our weapon, okay? Especially for those who obey the Most High's law, okay? So let's keep going. Right here in the seal portion, chapter 80, uh, 86, verses 84, 84 to um, 85, and it says, Ye do not have faith in the Lord, for if ye had faith in him, ye would not suffer one of the, your, your loved ones dieth and enter again into the spirit world and receive therein with the love of the Father. Okay? And it says right here, um, so let, let's do a pause real quick, okay? Let's get that out. Let's get that out real quick, okay? So it's talking about, it says that you're not having faith. Okay, it says that you're not having faith when it comes to, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, healing wise. Okay, you're not, you're not putting your faith in the, and trust in the Most High. You're putting your faith in man. Okay, so this is what the Most High wants to let you know. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse, um, verse 19, and it says, okay, and these precepts again. With that other one I just gave you guys, okay? This precept 12, and I'm going to read that to you guys again. But be before I do that, let's read back up, up top to 83 so we can keep going, okay? It says, Behold, ye of the latter days shall trust more in your doctors and the medicine that you shall create by the means of the miracles that Satan shall have given to you, that do the Lord who is the giver of life and the one appointing you over death. It says, 84, You do not have faith in the Lord, for if you have faith in Him, you will not suffer... When the, your loved ones died and entered again into the spirit world and received therein by the love of the Father. Okay? But you did suffer death, and because, because of death and cause of your suffering is a lack of faith. For you do not want to know the Father and his, and his plan of salvation for you. Okay? So this is what's going on. It says you're lacking your faith, right? So Deuteronomy 32 and 20 says, 
And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation, children in whom there is no faith. Okay? Children in whom there is no faith. Why? Because you're dealing, you're, and you're getting excitement when it comes to death. Okay? You're excited about death. That's what goes on over here in America, right? Everybody's so fascinated with death. Okay? You know, you see an accident on the side of the road. You turn your you turn your neck like this. Oh, 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 I gotta pay attention. Huh? So I'm getting one myself, right? So that's what happens. Everybody's so fascinated with some type of entertainment. Okay? Everybody is fascinated with entertainment over here in the Americas. Okay. So with this, okay, with this out there, this is what happens when you when you be fascinated with death. Okay, this this is what happens to you. Okay. And I'll read that to you guys one more time over here in the sealed portion real quick. It says right here. But it says, but you do suffer because of death and for the cause of your suf suffering is the lack of faith. For you not want to know the Father and His plan of salvation for you. Okay, let's go to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 15, and says, And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Okay, so that's what happens. When you're constantly fearing death and having the entertainment of death, you're going to be subject into bondage. Okay. You're going to be subject into bondage. Okay? And check this out, okay? When is the only time most family members get together? Is when somebody dies. Correct? That's the only time when people get together. Okay? That is the only time when family members get together when another family member dies. That's the only time they get together. Okay? The only time. See, we, we can't be doing stuff like that. Okay, we got to get together every time. Make plans, you know, to get to, you, to your uh, your brother out there, your sister out there. Okay? You know, especially those that do the will of the Father. You know, get, get to your brother and your sister. Speak to your brother out there. Speak to your sister out there. Speak to, your, speak to the others. Call them at least once a week. Hey, hit up Kodash. Like, hey, yo, what's up, Kodash? You know, you know, I'm just checking up on you. Hey, what's up, Elder? Hey, you know, I'm just calling to check up on you. Hey, what's up, Elder Tony? You know, I'm just calling to check up on you. What's up, Elder Sabal? You know, I'm just calling to check up on you. Hey, what's up, Big Jew? You know, I'm just calling to check up on you. Hey, what's up, brother? This. Hey, what's up, sister? That. Hey, calling, checking on each other, my brothers and sisters. Okay. If you don't got numbers, get the numbers down. You know, it's it, it's easy that way. Okay. We need to be around each other a lot more frequently at these time of days coming up, okay? We are in the, the months when they're going to keep pushing out these vaccines and you know, everything going to keep getting hard. The devil is going to keep attacking, okay? So let's keep going. Let's go to the sealed portion, chapter 80, 86. And we'll read verses 86 through 88, okay? Still portion, chapter 86, verse 86 through 88. And it reads, For you knew of his plan, then you would know of your great wickedness. So it's talking about, you know, the, uh, the plan of the devil. For you knew of his plan, then you would know of your great wickedness. And you would give your, your cause to change the course of your lives, which you have chosen for you yourselves and the only means of your happiness. And those who live, those who lies you save, having fought out the will of the Father, shall remain among you, and ye shall be burdened unto you, and ye shall also suffer many of them who to suffer exceedingly because of the choices you have made for them by fighting against the will of God. Okay? What is the will of God, my brothers and sisters? The will of God you can find out in Psalms 143, verses 10, Psalms 140 and 8. That is the will of God. Keep the law. Okay. Law is spiritual. Okay. We got to keep it in our hearts. Okay. 
you know, um, let's keep going. It says, by fighting against the will of God, by keeping them in my in mortality, when they could be enjoying peace and happiness in the spirit world. Okay, verse eighty-eight says, "Behold, I give you, I give it as my opinion that it is good that you save your lives with your doctors and your medicines and the miracles that Satan has provided for you, and because your lives are saved." You have more time to repent. What? And because you are saved, you have more time to repent of your wickedness. And prepare yourselves better for a state of death. What? So you can prepare yourself for a state of death and hell, which shall accompany the wicked after the death in the spirit world. Okay? Let's get that precept out. Let's go to... Uh, first Nephi chapter 15. Let's go to first Nephi chapter 15. First Nephi 15. And we're gonna read first Nephi 15, and we're gonna read verses 31 and 32. 15, 31, and 32. And it says, so this is what it's precepting to, okay. So after we just read that, okay, where it talks about, um, yeah, more time to repent of your wickedness and prepare yourselves for a better state of death and hell which will accompany the wicked at the death of the spirit world. So that precepts over here, you know, with uh, 1 Nephi 15, 31 and 32, and it says, And thus, and, and they said unto me, Does this mean the torment of the body in the days of probation? Or doth it mean the final state of the soul after the death of temporal body? Or doth it speak of the things which are temporal? Verse 32 says, And it came to pass that I said unto them, that it was a reputation of, of things both temporal and spiritual, for the day should come that they must be judged of their works. Yeah, even the works which were done by the temporal body in their days of probation. Okay, so that's what it's talking about. Okay, when we go to that last scripture in 88. Okay, let's keep going. Let's go to still portion chapter 86, 89 through 91. We're going to finish this off, this chapter off real quick, okay? And we're going to keep throwing some more precepts in. Okay, let's keep going. Still portion. Chapter 86, verses 89 through 91, it says, For you shall give thanks to the doctors and the medicines which you ha have saved you. Yeah, there are many of you who might say it was God who saved your life by the means of doctors and the medicines that you have among you. But I say unto you, truly it was your God who has saved you, but it was not the eternal Father who had promised you eternal life and happiness but it was the God of the world who giveth you his own blessings according to your desires to serve him and to keep his commandments verse 91 91 says and as you save your lives you shall lose them what as you save your lives you shall lose them what as you shall save your life you shall lose them okay who desire to hold you captive in his chains and to bind you tighter until you are defenseless before him as he leadeth you down to your destruction. Okay, so this is what's going on. It's clear as day, plain as, as it, plain as can be. Elementary level. Okay, elementary level. I'm going to break it down as easy as you can understand it. Okay, let's go to um, Second Nephi real quick. Second Nephi. Going to go to your second sick again. Second Nephi chapter nine. Second Nephi chapter nine. We're going to go to Second Nephi chapter nine, verses forty-five and forty-six. Second Nephi chapter nine, verses forty-five and forty-six. It says. O oh, my beloved brethren, turn away from your sins. Shake off the chains of him that will bind you fast. Come unto God, who is the rock of your salvation, 
Prepare your souls for that glorious day when justice shall be administered unto the righteous, even the day of judgment, that you may not shrink with an awful fear, that you may not remember your awful guilt and imperfectness, and be cons 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 constrained to examine, holy, holy are thy judgments, O Lord God Al Almighty. But I know my guilt, I transgress thy law, and my transgressions are mine, and the devil hath obtained me, and that I am prey to his awful misery. Okay. He's speaking a lot of death right there for you guys, ain't it? Let's go to 1 Corinthians real quick. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we're going to look at verses 13 through 17. Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what is sort. If any man work abide which he hath built upon built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer a loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet as also by fire. Verse 16 says, Know ye that ye are the temple of, the, of, of God, that is the Spirit of God that dwelleth in you. Verse uh, 17 says, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Okay? So our bodies are the temple of the Most High. We have to keep them clean. Okay, we have to keep them pure. Okay. Let's keep let's keep knocking it out real quick. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16. And let's go to Verse 12. Okay. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 verse 12. For it was neither herb nor molly, molly plaster that restored them to health. But thy word, O Lord, which healeth all things. What? For it was neither weed or pills that restored them to health. But thy word. Okay. And yeah, we're gonna we're gonna bring up marijuana in this this topic, okay? We're we're gonna bring it up. So I know a lot of you guys out there thinking that, hey, if God grew it, then I can smoke it. That that you want to use that as your excuse to smoke marijuana? No. Your bodies are the temple of the living God. Keep them clean. Keep them holy. Okay, keep them clean, keep them holy. And we're going to show you a lot of in-depth information right about now, okay? Let's go to Genesis chapter... Okay, we're done with the seal portion on this matter, okay? So we're going to keep going. Now we're going to keep diving inside the Bible, the stick of Judah. Okay, let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Okay, this is where a lot of people out there like to go and justify and say, oh... Weed is a herb, so I can smoke it. Oh, is it really? Is it really? Let, let's, I'm going to show you some history on this stuff. Okay, inside the Bible, too. Watch this. Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. This is how they justify smoking weed. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree... In which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. So, you know, they want to say, oh, you can eat it. Oh, you can throw, you know, you can throw your um, your little um, your little weed plant buds, you know, the, the chronic stems or whatever you want to throw. You can throw it in your food. You know, you can make some little weed brownies. 
you know, you can use it for your consumption, things of that nature. Oh, you can, you can stick it in there on things of that nature. And see, they, they come with all kinds of excuses to, to justify smoking weed. You cannot justify smoking weed. Because I'll tell you straight to your face, you're do, you, you, the majority of the time you're doing it for pleasure. It's all lust. That's what it is. You're lusting after marijuana. That's all you're basically doing. Okay. I used to smoke weed back in, you know, back in the days. You know, I used to smoke it. You know, I couldn't smoke it. You know, I'm, I was always paranoid. You know, weed was not for me. Same thing with alcohol. You know, I don't drink. I don't even touch wine. Okay. And that's a whole nother topic we can go into another time. Okay. We'll tackle that at another time. Alcohol, things that nature. Okay. Most I will. So let's go to Ezekiel chapter 8. Now I'm going to give you guys a clear image that the blunt that people smoke nowadays, you be rolling up a, a little blunt. I'm going to show you a vivid image. Okay. I'm about to show you a vivid image in the scripture. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8. Watch this, okay? You're like, whoa, what's that? Okay? Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 17. This is going to be a, a vivid image of somebody rolling a blunt and trying to smoke it and trying to justify that, hey, it's cool. So they, they, they tried doing this back in the day too. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Ain't nothing new under the sun, my brothers and sisters out there. Okay? Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 17. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? It is a light thing to the house of Judah. What? To the house of Judah. That they commit the abominations. What? That they commit the abominations which, which they commit here. For they have filled the land with violence. What? For they have filled the land with violence. And have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put a branch to their nose. What? For lo, they put a branch to their nose. What color is a branch? It's brown. What color is a blunt? It is brown. What is that weed? That you you are uh, making going inside your body, it's an abomination. Why? It's because you're not keeping your temple clean. You're not keeping your temple clean. So the Most High says, "No, smoking marijuana. Hey, don't do it. You can't justify smoking weed. No, you can't be doing that. Okay. That is, hey." I'm speaking to somebody right now. I'm speaking to somebody right now, right? Whatever it is, put it away. Okay? Put it away. Drop the mess. Just as it says over here in um, <clears throat> Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter... Let me see if I can pull it out for you guys real quick. Wisdom of Solomon chapter... Chapter 1. Okay, uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verses 1 through 7. Okay, read it on your own time. Drop the mess. Okay, you cannot justify smoking weed. You're, you're using it for, you know, uh, entertainment. You're using it to, to sell it, to make a profit off of it. And you're, you're using it for, uh, you're not using it for medicinal purposes. Okay, and if you're trying to do it for medicinal purposes, oh, I, I have cancer, so I could smoke. It. No, weed and pills is not going to heal you and restore you to health. The Most High will restore you back to your health, my brother out there, my sister out there. Okay, the Most High will change you. If he can, there's many people out there that have testimonies. They've been through this. Okay, you have to fight it. 
This is how Satan is dealing with you in your temptations. Okay? Proverbs chapter 16. Proverbs chapter 16, verses 25. There is a way. What? There is a way that seemeth right unto a man. What? There is a way that seemeth right unto a woman or a man. But the end thereof is the ways of death. What? The ways thereof are death. I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to be smoking no damn blunt with the Most High. You're not going to be smoking no blunt with your Shia when he cracks that sky. Hey, good luck. Don't try it. Because most, hey, your Shia will smite you dead. See? You're coming with all these justifications trying to smoke the weed. Hey. Having all these justifications trying to pop pills, hey, it's not going to restore you to health, my brothers and sisters. Okay, it's not. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus inside your pocket for 32 and 17. Okay, Ecclesiasticus chapter 32, verse 17, and it reads, They, it says, a sinful man, what? A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. Okay, just like I just said. Hey, it says right there again in Proverbs uh, 16 and 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Ecclesiastes chapter 32 verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved, but findeth an excuse according to his will. And then all of a sudden, they'll start doing this, okay? They'll start doing this. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 24. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. Okay? For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and an evil suspicion hath overthrown their judgment. Okay. Let's go to 1 Peter 5 and 8. 1 Peter 5 and 8. We're almost just about done, my brothers and sisters. 1 Peter 5 and 8. 1 Peter 5 and 8. And it reads, be sober, what? Be sober, what? Be sober, what? Be sober, what? Be sober, be vigilant, what? Be vigilant, yeah, like, hey, have a sense of awareness. Be sober, be, be, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. What? Be sober-minded, my brothers and sisters. Okay, sober-minded. Sober minded, that, that's how you got to do things, okay? That is how you got to do things, okay? This is how you, you got to keep, you got to keep striving for perfection, my brothers and sisters out there, okay? Let's keep going. Psalms 41 and 4. Psalms 41 and 4, and, it's, and it reads, Psalms 41 and 4, I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul. What? Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee, O Lord. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. And it reads. Let me see. Yep, 30 to 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thy seed may live, that what both you and your seed, <clears throat> your generations after you, can live. <clears throat> okay? There's another one inside the Apocrypha, Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiasticus. Okay, Ecclesiasticus chapter um, 21, 
verse. Um, let's see. Yep, 31 verse 22. Okay. Ecclesiasticus in your Apocrypha, verses 31 verse 22, it says, My son, hear me, and despise me not. And at last thou shalt find as I told thee, and in all thy works be quick, shall, so shall there no sickness, what? So that there no sickness come upon thee, okay, come unto thee. Don't despise the Most High. Don't do it. He's trying to help you, okay? The Most High is trying to help you, that's all. He just wants you to be on His side. He wants you to... He wants you to be in the kingdom to rest. Okay? He, he wants to see you rest. Our last scripture we're going to get into is uh, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. And it reads. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Mosai. Okay, I'll read it to you guys again. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of the Most High. Okay? Let us fear the Most High. And I want to show you guys something real quick before we end it real fast, okay? Let's pull that out real quick. One more time. Ready? Watch this. So, you guys, my sister's always been the bargain shopper of our family. Yeah. And yeah. when I told her how much I'm paying for Christ. Hey, what type of disciples in this world are you discipling? Can people truly see the Christ in you? And can people truly see the Christ in them? This is prayer call, y'all. Is it okay to smoke weed and get drunk and turn up? Certainly not. Stay sober minded, come on. Stay sober, ready and alert. The enemy is lurking, you're the one he wants to hurt. One drink, one puff can ruin it. Think about it, bro, cause you shouldn't be doing it. Stay sober, ready and alert. The enemy is lurking, you're the one he wants to hurt. One puff, one drink can ruin it. And think about it, bro, cause you shouldn't be doing it. Show me in the Bible where it says you couldn't drink. You and I will know it clearly change the way you think. With no values, we we'll only bring embarrassment. Drunk with the point of changes, but not shit even heretics. And they said Jesus turned the water into wine. If you're twisting up the scriptures in the party, you was blind. You're trying to justify the reason why you drink. So you hang around other people who think the way you think. Nah. Stay sober, ready and alert. The enemy is lurking, you're the one you want to hurt. One puff, one drink, you go with it. Think about it, bro, you shouldn't be doing it. Stay sober, ready and alert. The enemy is lurking, you know what he wants to hurt. One drink, one puff, can ruin it. Think about it, girl, cause you shouldn't be doing it. I guess they say they want to legalize the marijuana. So now you think it's cool to breathe inside the marijuana. You smoke the joint at home, you said it don't relax you. The temptations of this world start to attract you. And everything all around you to distract you. You can't even focus on the scriptures in the chapter. Hey, now your faith starts doubting. It's hard to think though with your brain all cloudy. You try to say though with some medical reasons. It seems like the V though you're defending your demons. You try to justify smoking all the day. You hang around other people who think the way you think. Nah, stay sober, ready and alert. The enemy is lurking, you know what he wants to hurt. One drink, one puff, you ruin it. And think about it, but you shouldn't be doing it. Stay sober, ready and alert. The enemy is lurking, you know what he wants to hurt. 
fuck one drink, no can ruin it. Think about it, man, cause you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah, you said you always fell hell back. Always in trouble, man, and always get yelled at. You want the cell phone that heaven holds the dead max. You want the money, so you rob for the cell crap. Hey, you try to blame it on the poverty. You try to blame it on the economy. You blame everybody else, so when everything crumbles, you can only blame yourself. Look, alcohol opens doors for other spirits. God gave me this message. Who cares who don't want to hear with this? Smoking weed opens doors for other spirits. God gave me this message. I don't care if you don't want to hear with look. Stay sober, ready in the dirt. The enemy is lurking. You the one he wants to hurt. One puff, one drink, make a rule with it. Think about it, brothers. You shouldn't be doing it. The book of Titus it says, one who is an overseer should be entrusted with God's word. He must be blameless, not overbearing, not quick-tempered, not given to drunkenness, not violent, not pursuing dishonest gain. Rather, he must be hospitable, one who loves what is good, who is self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firmly to the trustworthy message that has been taught so that he can encourage others by sound doctrine and refute those who oppose him. See, people will be rebellious and try to say it's okay to do this and that. But how can you preach to an alcoholic it's okay to have one beer? How can you preach to a crackhead it's okay to smoke one joint when they're going to take it to the next level? You can't. As you set examples of holiness, you as a leader must be. What type of disciple do you disciple? Do you teach the kids to be honest? Do you tell the children and the women? Do you tell the women in the church to dress modest? Do you tell the men to remain faithful to the wives and the, and the, the things that they've been entrusted with? Trust God with your life, man. Stay sober-minded, ready, and alert. These little ones, they can't be drink, seeing you drink beer and think it's okay to get drunk and turn up on the weekend because alcohol opens doors for other spirits. Marijuana opens doors for other spirits. Regardless of what you say, have faith in God. Trust in God before you trust in that blunt. Trust in God before you trust in that drink just to make you feel good. It says, David said he, he encouraged himself. My joy is in the strength of the Lord. That's why I stand here today. Even while I'm grieving, wounded within, I'm still fixed and broken. Chosen vessel. Righteous vessel. If I could do what you could do, well, brother Brian, you just don't understand. No, I understand. Well, I lost my mom. I lost my, I lost my brother. I Man, I come from the streets. I come from the same thing. What can you say? Tick for tack, tack for tick. What can you say? You can't. You apply your life by the word of God. And this is for the leaders, man. You're held accountable for what you're teaching your flock. Make sure you're teaching your flock the truth, man. Okay? Salvation of Christ, man. He is our righteousness. That is our righteousness. I don't care about how many church services you preach at or where you go to or who you help do what. The only thing that makes you right for heaven is what Jesus did on the cross. Remember that. Your salvation is confessing and believing in your heart. Everything else is righteous gain that you do. Accountable for what you teach others, man. You hear me? Don't put chains on people's neck. Don't put that padlock right back on their neck when they've been set free. Come on. There's no condemnation in Christ. Teach them how to, how to be good examples, man. Don't teach them how to just, just uh, compromise with sin and tip your toe around the enemy's playground. We stomp through Satan's playground and we snatch souls and bring them back. And we teach the man who used to be a drunkard, look, you can be, have fun being a sober-minded man. You don't have to play with that type. New creation. All things have passed away. Old things have passed away. New in Christ. Come on, man. Don't let me get started, man. Keep in mind the baby. In Jesus' name. Boom. Oh.